In one of my previous videos, I talked about the idea of the swimming pool of English, that you have to jump in and swim around if you want to really become a more natural English speaker. It's the idea of immersion. We call it immersion, surrounding yourself with the language, having the environment to environment, environment, why did I say it like that? Environment, the environment to improve, right? But not everybody has the chance to actually live in, for example, America and work there and buy stuff there. In this video, I want to give you some suggestions, some tips for how to do that, for how to get immersion, even if you don't live in a native English speaking country. So let's get started. So there's a really cool website called Reddit. Very cool. Reddit. Sometimes it's called the front page of the internet because it has all of the latest things from around the internet voted up by the people in the community. So the first thing you get is an overall feeling for the culture, English speaking culture, the humor, right? the news, the writing style, and you can kind of feel the, the whole whatever it is, that, that thing that makes a culture of what it is. To touch. When you see, when you check out the front page of Reddit, you can get a feeling for English speaking culture. But also, there are these cool little communities on Reddit called subreddits, and there are thousands and thousands of them. Uh, around everything that you could possibly imagine. Uh, travel, furniture, whatever. Anything that you can imagine, basically. You can see the posts, you can post yourself, comment on the posts. Because those communities are around your interests or what you know, you feel a little bit more comfortable, right? But also you're forcing yourself to communicate with people and make connections, and that's a very important part of the swimming pool. That's a very important part of immersion. Okay, so what about meeting people? We learn languages because we want to meet and talk with people, right? Isn't that why we learn to speak other languages? Yeah, yeah, kind of. Well, yeah, it's one of the reasons. <laughs> it's one of them. For sure, for sure, for sure. So there are four, four things that I want to recommend. And there are many others, but I want to recommend to you four because you can find them in many, many cities around the world. Number one is couch surfing. Couch surfing started out as a place where people would offer their sofa and then a stranger would come and sleep on your sofa for free. But they've expanded, so it's not just sofas now. You can say, hey, uh, if anybody is in town and would like to have a cup of coffee, let me know. I would be happy to buy you a cup of coffee. Then you go to their city and you meet them for a cup of coffee and you talk for 30 minutes or an hour or whatever. And it's free and it's interesting. I've done it before. I've met people. I've gone to museums with people who I didn't know. And then after we went to the museum and had a cup of coffee, we never met again. But some of them I became good friends with. So lots of different things can happen and it's pretty cool. So couch surfing is one. Another one that's similar to that, but more related to interests, is Meetup. Meetup is a really cool app. I use Meetup a lot. Meetups are things that happen around specific interests. So if you like outdoor activities or yoga, meditation, book clubs, you can start your own meetups based on something you're interested in. When I get back to New York, I'm planning on starting a meetup group. I won't tell you about what, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. Sometimes they're free, sometimes they're not, but maybe it's a nature walk, and as you're walking around exploring nature, you might have interesting conversations that happen naturally because you're with people doing a thing. When you go to a party or a bar, how do you talk to someone? It's difficult. But if you're doing an activity, or if you're in a book club, there is something to talk about because you're doing a thing together. So it's much more natural. It's not as awkward. Another one that's more focused on skills is Toastmasters, and they're actually in many cities. I think it's called a chapter. Maybe it's a group. I'm not sure. Chapter? Group? 
Anyway, Toastmasters is about public speaking, people who want to improve their ability to speak in public. So if you're going to go there and do that, obviously you have to improve your spoken English skills because if you don't, you're going to sound very silly when you talk in front of other people. But if you push yourself and do something that you're afraid to do, you're going to get better. And of course, you're going to meet people who are there doing the same thing. So that's a great way to improve your communication skills, your speaking skills. When I come to Beijing, I always go to startup events. Startups are little companies that are, that are starting up and they're held by groups that are related to startups. One of them is called Startup Grind. It's pretty cool. It's here in Beijing, but actually they're around the world. And there's probably one where you live or near where you live. And if you're interested in business, you're interested in meeting people who are interested in, in business and starting businesses and that kind of thing, it would probably be a good idea to attend some of those events. The cool thing is, generally, as far as I know, they are in English. So in Beijing, all of the events I've been to are in English. Now, what about things that you can do by yourself? People always ask me, what should I watch? What should I listen to? What should I read? What should I do by myself? Okay, so here's my answer. First, podcasts. Listen to podcasts. It's a really good way to work on your listening skills and listen to something that you're interested in. If you listen to things you're not interested in, then it's going to be boring. And if it's boring, you won't be able to focus and if you can't focus, then you won't learn anything. So there's no point and you've just wasted your time. There's a cool app called Overcast. That's the name of the app. Uh, Apple, if you have an iPhone, they have their own podcasting app. But I like Overcast because you can slow down the voice. Actually, I like to speed up the voice. But you can slow down the voice so that you can hear the words more clearly. There are many, many, many podcasts you can choose from. There are Harry Potter podcasts. There are podcasts about learning English. There are podcasts about space. So whatever you're interested in, you can find something. Choose what you like, and then you'll enjoy learning. That's very important, I think. Very important. Another great one is TED. I'm sure you know what TED is, but TED is cool because most of the videos have transcripts under them. You can read what you're hearing. So if you find it difficult to understand what the speaker is saying, you can read it. So that's pretty cool and it plays along as you go. And because there are so many interesting talks on so many interesting topics, you're going to learn lots of things that you wouldn't normally find. Lots of new words, lots of new phrases, and you're going to challenge yourself because people talk differently. Maybe it's an Australian accent or a British accent. That's actually really good. Because if you only understand one type of English, well, then you're in trouble if you ever talk to someone who speaks a little differently. I really like listening to audiobooks. I, I read a lot of audiobooks. Well, I listen to a lot of audiobooks. I say I read a lot of audiobooks. People say, you're not reading, you're listening. Okay, I listen to a lot of audiobooks. And I think it's great because it saves time. I can walk and listen at the same time. But what should you listen to? Well. Like I said before, find what you're interested in. But people always ask me, no, give me something, give me a book. Okay, just for this video, I have picked what I think is a very well-balanced book for you to read. It's called The Giver, The Giver. So if you, if you sign up for Audible and you buy a book or you get a book on Audible, get The Giver. It's a story, it's a novel, but the English is not too difficult. It's also an interesting story. And the speaker, the person doing the narration, reading the book, has a very clear way of speaking. So I recommend that as your first book if you haven't bought a book there before. And then if that one's pretty easy, you can go on and find something you're interested in. But that's a good starting point. Now, what about learning seriously? Do you need a teacher? Do you need to get a teacher? If you're meeting people at meetups, right, and you're making new friends, do you really need a teacher? Keep this in mind. There is a reason that people get a coach. If you're a golf player, you often don't just go out and play golf. 
you go out and play golf and then you talk to your coach or you go with your coach to go out and play. Why? 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 Why do people get teachers? Why do people need teachers? What's the reason? Well, one reason is very simple. If you have a lot of friends who speak English, do they correct you? Do they want to correct your English? No, they don't. If you say, why don't you correct my English? You never correct my English. It's because they're friends with you. They don't want to correct your English. If you're hanging out somewhere and doing something fun, they're not going to say, oh, by the way, you should say this instead of this. They don't want to do that. They're not robots. They, they're people. They want to hang out. They're friends, right? So <laughs> teaching is, <laughs> is something that people pay for, and there's a reason they pay for it, because it's not that easy to do, and it's something that actually helps you get better. So should you get a teacher? Well, if there are things that you really want to improve and you're not able to see what those things are and you've reached a point where you can't go further, yeah, probably, probably. Get a teacher. You can also sign up for classes on Yoli. I mentioned that in previous videos, but Yoli has teachers that you can take classes with anytime. Regardless, yes, teachers are a valuable thing to have because they can point you in the direction that you maybe can't see. And the reason they can do that is because they've seen so many other people trying to do the same thing and they can see what works and what doesn't work. They can tell you how to say things better. So whether or not you live in a native English speaking country, I hope the things that I've shared in this video can help you give yourself the immersion that you need to improve your spoken English can provide you the swimming pool of English that you can jump into and swim around in. Now, one thing I would like you to keep in mind, the common beginning point for all of the stuff I talked about is interest. In other words, what you're interested in and what you know can be the doorway to many possibilities, to communities, to friends, and to content, stuff you may listen to or watch, right? Whether it's Reddit or meetups or movies or whatever, TED Talks. So if I were you, what I would do is write down my interests. I would write down what I'm really interested in on a piece of paper. And then I would build a plan around those interests based on some of the things I've talked about in this video. Then you have the immersion that you need to improve and you actually enjoy it and that's very important because if you don't enjoy it you're going to get tired very quickly all right guys thank you very much for watching if you have any recommendations on videos you'd like to see please let me know and i will see you next time